Hey, hello. Good to see you. My name is Borino. I'm your coach. I've been training and working as a real estate agent and writing books and coaching for many, many years. Embarrassed to remind you. All right. It looks like we may have a little trouble with the stream, right? Something has been wacky. You guys notice that? The Google Cloud service went down yesterday and Vimeo and a lot of the services went offline. So, are you able to watch us? Are we live? Or are we having trouble? Let me know if you can see me. Eliana can see it. All right. So, it looks like you guys can see it, yes? Orlando Florida in the house. Fantastic. Good. Let me just put that in the shot. Mike is here. Good. Nice to see you guys. Welcome. All right. So let's get started. I have a good training session for you guys today. I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you. We're going to be talking about how to switch from being a buyer's agent, buyer's chauffeur, to being a listing agent. Because many of you still post, I'm frustrated, I work with the buyer and didn't work out, or we did, I showed them a million houses, we tried to do this and that, and never closed the deal, never got paid, buyers bought with somebody else and never bought at all. Been there, done that. I know the pain, I know the frustration. So I want to fix it today. So we're going to spend about 60 minutes today. This is going to be a training session. I actually have three pages of notes that I'm going to go over with you. I'm taking this seriously. This is serious business, this real estate training stuff that Borino is teaching you. And you're going to get stuff that normally people pay hundreds and thousands of dollars for training, you're going to get for free. But make me a promise. Before we get into this, please promise me, not only will you stay here, take notes and learn, but implement. Implement. Use this stuff. Use it. Your business can be better. You can make money. You can help clients. You can be a real estate rock star agent. But you need to implement. You need to make some changes. But if you don't make changes, if everything stays the same, how do you expect to earn more? What's going to shift other than you? Nothing else can change. If anything, things will go worse. But that doesn't matter if you implement. All right? Can you promise me? Shante, Washington, D.C. checking in. Inna is here. Mike. Wonderful. All right, guys. Ready to learn. I will give you, let's see, I think I have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that will help you transition and become a rock star, full time, profitable, successful listing agent. So let's get cranking. Number one, you need to make a decision. You need to decide. You cannot let the circumstances control you. You cannot, cannot let the life around you, the business around you, the conditions around you determine how much money you make, how you're going to make that money, how you run your business. You're still leaving your freedom, your wealth, your lifestyle to chance, to hope. You're still running your business on hope. On hope. You're hoping they're going to buy. You hope this is going to work out. You hope you're going to get that deal. You hope they're going to qualify. You hope they're not going to freak out after the inspection. You're still hoping. And I'm here to tell you, my friends, long term, you don't stand a chance. You're going to worry. You're going to stress. You cannot predict your income. You don't have the freedom. You cannot scale it on hope. Hope is not scalable. It's great that you're passionate, you're optimistic, that's important. But hope is not enough. And running your business, showing properties, being a buyer's agent sucks. Because you're wasting one of the most important assets. You can make more money. You can build new lead generation systems. You can get more clients, you can get more listings, but you will never get more time. It's the most valuable, most precious asset you have, and yet you're squandering it, you're acting like you have plenty, like this will last forever. Who knows how long this is going to last? Maybe the business will shift, maybe there will be a dramatic change out there, who knows? Nobody has a crystal ball, nobody knows. A few years ago, Airbnb was not around, Netflix was not around. Uber was not around. 
Look how the landscape has changed in all these giant industries. It can happen the same in real estate. I'm not here to fear mongering. I think there will always be a need for good, competent real estate agent. But can you afford to wait around and fuck around fighting for scraps, chauffeuring people, hoping, showing homes? There's a much better, much more profitable way to do that. But you cannot squander time and run it on hope. You're taking a chance because if you're not in control, which is what you're not, that's why I'm writing it in red, full color HD for you. We're not sparing no expenses here. If you're giving up control, if you're not in control, somebody else is. If you don't control what you do daily, if you don't control your business, how you get your business, how you lead generate, how you prospect, how you get appointments, how you get listings. If you don't control how you're making money, who does? If you're not driving that car, somebody else is in charge. And that's a scary thought. So you're wasting time. You're wasting opportunity. Opportunity to make money and to help people. That's the lovely happy face of a happy seller. Because there's only so much time yet. There's only so many opportunities. There are so many, so many mental cycles you have after which you're exhausted, you're tired, we all are. Opportunity wasted. So it's a mentally exhausting game. But there's one more problem. You create an attachment. You ever heard that expression? I'm sure you have. Throwing good money after the bad. Well, since I already invested three weekends with these people, I don't want to just let them go. I'll give it another chance. Hope, 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 hope. They're going to buy something. They're going to like something. This is it. I have a feeling. Tell me if you said those words because I know I did more than once. This time it's going to be different. Is it? It's not. And if you're really honest, if you add up the time, even, and this doesn't happen all that often, don't kid yourself, but even if you find the right buyer, they're qualified. You meet with them, you qualify them, you show them property, you negotiate the contract, write the contract, submit it, get it accepted, do the inspections and close the deal. If you're really honest and you add up the hours, those of you had, who did this exercise, I did this exercise live in my workshop. I did a two-day lead generation workshop, lead machine workshop in Las Vegas where I had 120 people in the audience. You know what the average time spent was? You ready for this? Now be honest, you will be either at the same or about the same or maybe more. 102 hours. That's your fucking investment working with buyers. Now I know some of these are lovely people, especially when they're first time buyers. I know they're excited and I know they're fun to work with and I know it can be very rewarding, very satisfying. It's just terrible business model. So before I can give you the tips how to transition, you need to be perfectly sold on the idea that there is no way you're going to survive this business, not survive, you're not going to thrive working with buyers. That's simply not possible. There is not a single agent out there, and I know tens of thousands of you guys, some of you personally, some of you are my students, some of you are my PATH students. But there's not a one who was making quarter of a million or more driving around on Saturday, showing properties on Sunday, writing contracts till 10 p.m. on Sunday night, hoping that in that pile of contracts and offers that the listing agent gets, yours will be noticed, presented and accepted just to start all over again because it didn't. And I was one of those schmucks for a very long time. You wonder why I was broke. So make a decision. That's step one. Make a decision. It is a decision. It is not based on circumstances. Once I start getting listings, I will transition. That's backwards. You're sitting in front of a fireplace and you're saying, once you give me some heat, I'll bring you some wood. It's backwards. You make a decision today and you say, this guy Borino is onto something here. I cannot go hungry. I cannot be broke. I cannot struggle and I cannot be stressed anymore. And the way I'm going to shift it is I'm going to let go of these buyers. It's a tough, scary decision. You've got to do it. You've got to let go of one bar to grab the other. It's like a trapeze. But it has to be done. And there is no smooth transition, safe. No. You've got to jump. And it's scary, but it's got to be done. You've got to make a decision. You've got to make a decision to run a profitable business. 
You've got to make a decision to be a successful real estate agent. Make a lot of money, 150, 200, 300, 500,000 or more. It starts with that. So if you have money issues, if you have wealth issues, clean that up first. That's how I wrote the book on it, Money Mindset for Real Estate Agents. You get it as part of the path. All right. So now, in order, are you sold? Please say yes. Please say yes. Please hear me on this. I don't want you to struggle anymore. There is tons of business out there. Five million transactions will be closed this year. But we're halfway through, by the way. So if you continue fucking around, Christmas will be before you know it. You're going to look back and you go, what the hell happened? So let's stop that. Let's do it right now. This is a good opportunity right now. Okay? Are you clear on part one? This needs to be a strong decision. Are you guys clear? Please hear me on this. Those of you who have converted are enjoying listings. Now, yes, there are exceptions, and I'll give you those in just a moment. There are a few buyers I want you to work with. But the core of your business is focused on listings. That's it. All right? Alexandra says, yes. Good. She's on board. Tara, yes. She's on board. Who else is on board? Rebecca is on board. David says, hey, David, good to see you, my man. Some buyers can be an opportunity cost, totally. And I will give you some exceptions to that, David. I 100% agree. But there has to be a system behind it, and I'll give you that system. Good to see you, my brother. I hope I'll see you in San Diego at the lab coat. Would love to hang out and grab a drink or a cup of coffee and talk with you. All right, so once you have the decision in place, once you say, gotta be determined to focus on listings, here's what we're gonna do. It's a combination. So first, you're gonna make a plan. And I'm not a huge fan of like 177 steps, all complicated mind maps and all that shit. I, I found it overwhelming, confusing. I look at it and I go, uh, what's for lunch? <laughs> Are you with me on that? But simple plan and I'll give it to you. Number two, you add a system to it. See, that's the beautiful thing about this crazy business. That everything, everything, every single element from getting leads to keeping in touch with those leads to building relationship with those leads, nurturing, appointment, contract, transaction, close, is a set of sequences, systems. You can break it down into steps. So plan plus systems plus action. You got to have a plan, you build a system, plus you're taking action. You're working it. It's not going to be perfect first, you're going to fine tune it, you're going to work on it. And it's going to get better, you're going to improve it. But you got to start with something, you got to start with something. And then you add one more element to it, discipline. Because you will have a tendency to say, well, I tried it, it didn't work, I'm going to go back to my old ways. That's just like when I started my regimen. As you know, I decided to make some serious changes, permanent changes in my lifestyle. To lose weight, to get healthy, to get more energy, to feel better, look better for you guys, Mr. Sexy over here. So what I did was we adjusted how we eat, what we feed our bodies and how we exercise. Typical stuff, nothing out of the ordinary, didn't do anything magical or miracle or anything, but I stuck with it. And you know the hardest part? The hardest part was sticking with it when it was not showing me results. That was the hardest part. Like I was hitting in the gym and my man George, he's a tough motherfucker. I mean, he's not big, you know what I mean, he's tall. He's built like a tank, his muscles, you tap him on the back and you're like, what the hell, dude, you have like protection there or, or some shield or so, it feels really tough. He was kicking my ass and I was dying in there first. I was out of shape, I was fat, I was unhealthy, I was sluggish, I didn't feel good. And we just kept going at it, going at it, going at it, and I would step on the scale, I'm like, fuck me, all this work, all this focus, all this time and effort I put in, and I'm not getting the results yet. And he says, stay with it, brother. Stay with it, stay with it. We'll tweak, we'll adjust. This is where the discipline has to kick in. Where I have to discipline myself in the morning, put my workout clothes on, put my tennis shoes on, get my ass into the gym. It's the same thing here. There's gonna be a momentum you need to build. It's gonna take a little bit of time before the results start showing up. Getting discouraged is so easy. 
And it's easy to give up because it's not going to be comfortable. Discipline is the difference between what you want right now, which many people want to be comfortable and safe, and what you want the most. That's the discipline. For me, the discipline was I wanted to be 185 pounds. And I decided to not stop until I reached that goal. That was when I was 216. I was 216 pounds. Well, there was a point where I was 221. I was fat as fuck. Unhealthy. Terrible. Today, I'm 188. I'm three pounds away. Now, I'm not bragging. This is not like show off or anything. But I'm telling you, big chunk of that effort, just like making money, just like losing weight, just like anything, will require discipline. You need to develop the discipline to be focused on what you want the most. Not what you want right now. And yes, you need to have a plan, you need to have the systems, you need to have action, but it's the discipline that's going to carry you over through the days where it's going to suck and it's going to be boring and it's going to be hard. You will deal with rejection. That's not just in real estate, that's in love. You remember your first prom, you remember the first date, remember the first rejection, either given or received. It's just life. And the faster you get over it, the faster you are able to get up, dust yourself off and say, all right, that one hurt, let's do it again. The better and further you're going to go. All right. Good so far? Everybody good? Yes? Absolutely, Shante says. Totally agree with that. Oh, David will not be there. Baby, do. Congratulations on the baby, my man. But we'll talk, we'll connect. All right, so let's continue. Now let's get to the nitty gritty of the mechanics of it. Once this is away, done. Be clear, why are you doing it? The why is so important. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on mindset and motivation and all that good stuff. We have plenty of other training for that. But be clear, this really matters to me a whole lot. I want to have a good profitable business and I'm here to help you. So let's talk about the plan. Here's the big plan, how are we gonna transition? All right, pretty simple stuff. I don't want to mark on my fingers, but so be it. If that's the price I have to pay to teach you, to inspire, to guide you, I'm willing to take that price. All right, so let's talk about number one. Who will be your ideal clients? Who will be your ideal sellers? Understand mindset, they're out there. Believe they're out there. I mean, if five million deals will be closed this year, holy crap, that's a lot of business. And it's all around you. Check your MLS, plenty of evidence. So start with who? My recommendation is start with high probability leads, HPLs, high probability leads. These are the easiest to find and easy to convert. Think about it this way. If I could choose between 10 random people and 10 people who are already in the process of moving, who is a better prospect? Think about it. Would you rather have just 10 complete strangers or would you rather have 10 people already raising their hand going, we want to move, we want to sell? It's much easier. They're easier to find, easier to convert. That's why they're high probability. And majority of them end up being good listings. But of course, you need a good system for it. We'll get to it. But you get my point? So why not start with who is the most profitable ones? So where would I start? I would set up funnels. And I would set up four funnels to become a real estate rock star. I would be funnel number one. This is my beautiful artistic drawing of a funnel. Would be expired listings, new and old expireds. I mean, if somebody already tried once, if somebody said, yes, where do we sign? We want to move. There may be a possibility to want to try it again. There may be a chance that they still have a hope to live somewhere else. There may still be a problem that they're trying to solve by selling the house. So why not just build a system around it? And we'll talk about it what to do. But first start with who? Because who you're going to target will impact the systems and steps. Are you with me? Second one, second funnel for sell by owners. Same thing. Yes, they don't like agents. Yes, they want to save money on commissions, but I know something they don't. 70% of these guys end up listing with an agent. 70%. That means out of 10 fistballs I put on a system, seven statistically will end up with an agent. If that's not an opportunity, I don't know what it is. Third funnel I would set up, my beautiful drawing would be referrals. 
you already sit on tons of opportunities. 12% of Americans will move in the next 12 months. 12% of us. That means out of 10 people you know, one, maybe two, are considering moving. Out of 100 people you know, there are 10 opportunities. Now, some may be renting, some may be go out of the area, some maybe you will never connect with, but some you will, and some you can convert. With the right system, totally doable. Fourth one, I would do an open house every week. Again, I work high probability leads. If somebody stops by an open house, there's a good chance they're thinking about doing something. There's a good chance they're considering something. Are you with me? So this is the who part. This is who I want to work with. This is the best chance to get good quality seller leads, good quality sellers, good quality listings. Now, let's talk about how. That's step two. How it will impact who I'm working with. But the general approach of how do I get these leads is in this multi-channel approach, MCA. Multi-channel approach. That means it's not just I call them. It is not just I mail them. It is not just I run Facebook ads. It is not just I visit. It's not just doing the expired package. It's all of it. Emails, videos, and texts. Multi-channel approach because it's like a wide net. Think about it this way. You have two fishermen. One has a one hook in the water. There's a good yummy stuff on the hook, but it's only one. And there is a trawler pulling a big net. Who's going to catch more fish? Think about it. Who has a better chance to catch a whole lot of fish? I want a whole lot of fish. I don't want just one or two here and there. I want a whole bunch. So I'm going to build the biggest fucking trawler I can possibly build with the biggest net. So let's talk about the multi-channel marketing. What does it include? First, I call. It's easy, it's quick, I can have a quick phone conversation. And yes, you need to master it. Yes, the art of communication is important, but it's still an important part of the business. Hint, this guy from Czechoslovakia learned how to do it. With a silly accent, zero knowledge in real estate, and very little discipline, you can too. Yes? All right, so I call them, I can text, I can email, and we'll talk about tools that will help you do this better. I can send a video. I can either text the video or send it as an email. I can visit them. I can uh, mail them, send a postcard, send a letter, send an expired package. Social media. These are all very good channels. I can hit them on LinkedIn. I can hit them on Facebook. I can look them up on these channels and start communication with them. All of this, the purpose of all of that color again, you ready, is to start a conversation. To start a conversation. That's our objective with these leads, which is actually part three, which is what? What do we want? To start a conversation. So I'm attempting all these things to start a dialogue with them. Make sense? This is first step. This is the first part. Now, the first part was, of course, the planning, the decision, all that. But the mechanics of it. Make sense so far? Are you with me so far? Multi-channel approach works the best. So it's not about just one thing. It's not about just one thing. It's about everything. Because you never really know how you're going to reach them. You never really know who's going to respond to what, how. Are you with me? All right. So. That's the how and the what. Next. Remember we said we need to do some planning. You ever notice when things get busy, the first thing agents drop, tell me if you're just as guilty as I was, is lead generation, like you get five or six really good listings, few things under contract, what's the first thing you're gonna kind of put on hold, pause, is lead generation, right? So we're going to tie in the plan with when. When are you going to do this? When are you going to send the emails? When are you going to follow up? When are you going to call? Two hours daily. 
preferably first thing in the morning, just like my workout. It is because we have a finite amount of discipline energy. So think about it this way. It's like this, this glass. When you get up in the morning, it's full. You're enthusiastic, you're disciplined, you're ready to go, you have the energy. As the day progresses, you're dealing with life, dealing with kids, dealing with spouse, with the car, with business, lead generation, rejection, deals falling apart, trying to rescue them, inspectors, appraisals, and all that. You're draining the energy, the mind cycles, and the discipline. By the time five o'clock rolls in, you're ready for a nice scotch, double scotch maybe if the day was really rough. Put your feet up, you're done. That's why, at least for me, and maybe you can relate to that, working out in the afternoon is impossible. Like, I would not go to the gym at 5 or 6 o'clock. I just don't have enough juice. That sounds good. I don't have enough juice. So get it done first thing in the morning. Get it out of the way. Make it productive. Not only will you feel better, you have a better chance of accomplishing it, but it sets the tone of the day. It's like on the days I get my workouts done, which is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then yoga on Saturday, I have a better day. I feel like I, I accomplished something. The discipline kicked in and the endorphins kick in. And it feels good. So put that on your calendar, which is very important. Schedule it on your calendar. Two hours a day, solid lead generation and prospecting. Plus 30 minutes of practice and role play. And I know, role play, Barino, really? Yes. That was my secret, guys. The secret to have those conversations we had here, the secret to connecting with people, is to be competent, confident, helpful advisor, not your typical average salesperson. No pitching, no scripts, no closing. Don't need to do that. But you do need to master art of communication, which is 80% listening, 20% talking. To do that, to get really good at it, just practice it. Find a good role play partner, work with them for 20, 30 minutes a day. I promise you, within a couple of weeks, you will feel different. Within a month, you're going to be significantly better. Speaking from experience. Put it on your calendar. So it's a two-step process. Today you own your calendar. Today you own tomorrow. Today you plan your tomorrow. Then you build in time for administrative stuff that needs to be done for fucking around, watching Dancing Cats videos on YouTube. We all watch them for uh, putting out fires, dealing with difficult clients, rescuing deals, but you start with the stuff that matters the most, which is getting the business. Okay? And I will give you one more system that we need to plug into this in just a second. But put that on your calendar. This is the money time. 120 productive dollar minutes a day. Do it five days a week. That's 10 very productive hours. Now, some of you will go, yes, I'll do that. And some of you will already have reasons. You're drunken monkey, this little bastard, telling you why it cannot be done. And what it's really going on is your fear of rejection. We humans have massive fear of rejection. And it goes back to our social roots and we could spend a lot of time analyzing why that's happening. Just be aware that it is that fear that's preventing you from doing what it takes to make the money you want. And you're making a decision right now whether you're gonna do it tomorrow. So it's a two-step process. Today you plan for it, tomorrow you execute. That means you own your calendar, you own your today today for tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, game time, you open your calendar and you just follow it. And this is where the discipline has to kick in. Next, let's talk about systems. Which systems you're going to need to make all this work. Regular calendar will do. Paper calendar is okay. Google calendar is fine. Just be consistent. Consistent in planning it and consistent in using it. In addition to your calendar, let's talk about the systems that will help you become a listing rock stars. Systems. The first system you're going to need is a data provider. And this is a subscription service that you're going to use to get you the potential leads you want to work with. So let's say you say, I like expired listings, I want to work them. Whether you like them or not, doesn't matter. Nobody gives a shit. Go work them. They convert into listings. They're good leads. 
So you're going to have a data provider. One I like is Espresso Agent. We're affiliated with Espresso Agent. If you use the code BORINO, they'll let you try it for $29 for 30 days. I think it's a good data provider. You can get expireds and you can get FISBOS. They will give you name, contact information, are they on do not call list, have they been relisted, you can get their phone number, you can get their email, it's pretty good. None of these systems are perfect. None of it will give you 100% accurate data, but you're going to get something. And remember, if you don't have anything and your competition has something, they're better off already by default. Did you catch that? So get something, subscribe, it's just part of doing business. You're going to invest a few dollars, it's worth it. There are a bunch of others, but I would start with Espresso, test drive it, see how much you like it. That's the first system, data. Second system is I would get a dialer. And again, you have several choices. Espresso has a single line dialer already built in. You can get fancy and get Mojo, triple dial, or that, you know, 100 line dialer if you want. Uh, it's just going to make the process more efficient. These are tools that will help you go through the calls faster and be more effective. Definitely. Third one you're going to need is a contact management system. If you don't have one, get one. If you have one, use it. Because the next step, 50% lead generation, 50% follow-up. That's your time. So remember, I said two hours generating leads. We're going to plug in one more step to that. That's essential. But first, you need to have a system. So these three things, you're in business. You can get leads right now. That's the beautiful thing. That's the reason I like these funnels. Because it's not going to take you hours to build some fancy Facebook ad. It's not going to cost you hundreds and hundreds of dollars to run those ads. You don't need a bunch of systems plugged into it. You can literally push a button and have leads in seconds. Now, yes, you can do it without the data provider, of course. It's just going to be slower. You need to do more legwork. If I can pay a few dollars for a system, then I would do that. Now, of course, I would also recommend get my system where I'll walk you through all of this in detail. All right. Now, second step to the lead generation. So you got the leads coming in, but leads by themselves, of course, are not worth anything is your follow-up. That's what it takes to become a listing rock star. Here is why. Your listings will not come from the initial contact. Your listings will not come from the conversation you're going to have with the first sale by owner or the dialogue you will have with an expired listing. It's going to happen in the follow-up as you're keeping in touch with them. That's why having a CMS, very important. Having a sequence in that CMS that incorporates, again, the same trolling approach, remember, all channels incorporated, do as the best you can with what you have. If you don't have their email, use what you have. But always expand and always when you're in a conversation with them, says, hey, Jack, I forgot to ask you, what's your email? I don't have your email on file. I want to email you some stuff. Simple. You're only going to get it if you ask. So expand your data, make sure your data is current, and follow up. Here's why that's important. Most of your listings will happen like this. Can you see it? Am I in shock? Yes. So this is your first initial contact. You have a conversation with them. This is contact number two. Let's say you go there, you visit them, you drop off the expired package. This is your third contact. That's your first follow-up. Let's say you send them a market update. Then the follow-up number four. Let's say you send them a thank you note. And you keep it in touch all the way to contact number 15. Now here's what happens. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then after around contact 5 to 15, majority of the conversions happen. So it's going to take you multiple attempts to about attempt number five, conversation number five, postcard number five, whatever is part of that sequence, to start conversions. And this is where the dollars are. Between five and 15 follow-up touches. Now you want to know something interesting about your competition? I just kicked off. Hey, David, are you still here? Remember you talked about grounding? You inspired me, my man. Just a little side note, this is a grounding mat. I'll tell you about it later. Just wanted to point that out since Mr. David Surprise is on the call here. Follow-up happens, the magic happens between follow-up number 5 and 15. Here's an interesting insight. You know where most agents give up? Here. They try once, twice, maybe three times. Maybe. If they're really persistent. Too soon. They give up too soon. They give up here where the money starts here. But even after fifth, they tell me, no, we really don't want to sell, but send us the market update. We're curious what the homes are going for. 
and you keep in touch, you keep in touch, you're persistent, you're persistent, you're persistent. That is the most important element of your follow-up. It is not the fancy fonts and beautiful postcards and colorful brochures, any of that stuff. I mean, if you have them, that's fantastic. But it is the persistence, persistence that at the end wins the day. That is the most element of your follow-up, is the fact that they're familiar with you. They understand who you are, what you do. They're familiar with your voice, your face, your name, and how you can help them. Does that make sense, guys? This is critical. This connects to your lead generation. Now you're going. Now you have the nice net catching the fish. Okay? No. So, the final step is understanding the process. Is this good? Are you guys learning something good? See, when you start breaking it down, you're like, oh shit, I can do this. It feels overwhelming at first. It feels confusing, scary, big, and unattainable until your friend Borino starts breaking it down into simple steps. All right, so here's the final part, the process, which is the how. The process. We talked about the multi-channel approach. As you go through it, you take the same steps. There are seven steps. Step number one. Step number one. Did I just say that? <laughs> Step number one is the initial contact. And this will be a text. This can be a phone call. This can be a visit. This can be an email. It just depends how you got the lead and how you made the initial contact reach out, okay? Immediately after that is your first impression. And this is vital. Here's why. If you nail the first impression as a high status, helpful agent, confident, competent, everything that follows will be a lot easier. If you screw this up, if you fumble here, if you're needy, low status, nervous, insecure or too pushy, too arrogant, you're dead. It's over. And you're going to get brushes, stalls, delays, objections, avoidance. Or they simply stop taking your call, stop responding altogether. And you're wondering, well, they wanted to sell. What the hell happened? Right there. You have four seconds to nail the first impression. Now you understand why it's so important for you to practice, to be good in communication. Now you understand why it's so important to really master the art of having pleasant conversations, whether it's in person or on the phone. Marketing helps, advertising helps, mail helps, all these tools help. But they can't replace that. That's why it's so important. All right, step three is discovery. 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 Where are you going to discover who are these people? What are they trying to do? What is the problem they're trying to solve? And can I help them? They're going to discover how you are confident, competent, and helpful rather than a needy, desperate sales agent. That's the process of discovery. Now, this can all happen within seconds at the beginning. This can be your first visit with an expired listing. This can be a few minutes chat with the first sale by owner. This can be a referral phone call where you talk to the person. But it happens in this. First contact, first impression, discovery. Skipping the discovery at the beginning is going to cause problems at the end. Because it is through the process of discovery you really understand their position, understand their situation. Are they realistic? Are they ready? Is it in their best interest to sell and move? Agents who are willing to take the time to listen, to ask the right questions, are the agents who land the listing at the end because they're perceived different. You don't need to say you're different. You don't need to demonstrate you're different. You simply will be different. And it is through the inquiry of the discovery process that you clearly establish you're a professional, kind of like a CPA or a doctor. I mean, imagine your CPA would start doing your taxes without asking you questions and getting paperwork from you. Imagine your attorney would go to court to fight your cause without having to sit down with you to go over every single detail. Imagine your doctor would start a surgery without doing x-rays and without doing the the exams and all that. And yet agents do this all the time. 
And you wonder why so many have such a bad reputation and why they go broke. So don't do that. All right. So that's number three, discovery. Number four is trust. Is to start of building a relationship. This is what happens during the follow-up. They become familiar with you and it happens in three steps. First, they get to know you. They get to know, oh, Jim, yeah, the real estate agent. Second, they feel comfortable with you. That means they start asking you questions. They feel like there's no pressure, there's no agenda. You really have their best interest at heart. All the way to step three, which is the trust. Where they know, if we're going to list, we're going to definitely sit down and talk to you. If we're going to move, you're definitely one of the candidates. That's how you build trust. Make sense? Next, clarity. After the trust, clarity. And this is a dual part. Clarity where you're clear. This is what they want. Here's what's going to happen. This is their timeline. I am clear what they're trying to do, who these people are. What is their core driving emotion? What is their motivation? What is their desire? And they are clear. You see, many times, sellers start the process. You even list their house. And then all of a sudden, you bring a good offer. Things seem to be going really well, and they start stalling. They start nickel and diming you. They start saying, we're not going to repair that. What? It costs 100 bucks. Get it fixed. No. It's a great offer. You should take it. No. And you wonder why. There was no clarity. There was no clarity, not just logically, but emotionally. Because you already know, sellers make emotional decisions. The, the drive that makes them move from one house to another is always emotion-based. It's triggered by emotions. So being able to get that clarity where they're clear, this is why it matters to us, this is what we really want, and here's how we're going to get there, and here's who's going to help us, needs to happen in this process. You both gain clarity. Now, this can take a short period of time. This doesn't need to be a very elaborate process. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. You know what it depends on is one word, intensity. Intensity. Intensity of their core driving emotion, their desire to move somewhere else, how big of the problem they have on their hands, and how soon do they want to solve it. The intensity equals motivation. Make sense? So you're going to have the clarity. Why are they moving? What matters to them? Are they realistic? Is it possible? Can we make it a, a, a reality? And do I want to be part of the process? Don't move to the next step until the prior step is complete. Contact, first impression, discovery, trust, clarity. Okay? Then step number six is the actual appointment. Now, a little insight for you who want to become a listing rock stars rather than buyer chauffeurs. If you do these right, not even right, if you do them good enough, this one is easy. The appointment is easy. It's a nice, pleasant social interaction. Why? Because they have clarity. They trust you. You discovered what they want. They discovered you want to help them. You made a good first impression. This one is easy. If you skip these or really butcher them or not do them well, this is going to be an uphill battle with a lot of objections, a lot of stalls, a lot of delays, a lot of we need to think about it. So for those of you who struggle with that whole we need to think about it, we have more agents to interview, we need to get 100,000 more, we need this, we want that, Anything other than sign here, you screwed up the first five. Because then the final is just a listing. That means getting it listing, getting it sold. Bam. You're not taking enough listings. You're not helping enough sellers for several reasons. And I'm going to give you why. I'm going to give you the number one reason. And it's not what you think, probably. But on the mechanical side, on the system side, is because you don't have this process in place. Am I right? Now that's the bad news. The good news is implement this. Follow this. You're going to have a tendency to cut corners out of desperation, which brings us to the number one reason agents fail. So let me give it to you. The number one reason agents fail is because they go broke. The number one reason agents fail is because they don't have enough money. They don't make enough money. Now, of course, that's one of those, well, duh. Nobody would ever quit real estate because they made too much. They don't have anywhere to put it anymore. IRS is calling them. The bank is complaining. We need to get a bigger vault. What the fuck? <laughs> it's because they don't make money. Number one reason they're not making enough money 
is a lack of consistent prospecting and follow-up. Number one reason agents don't make enough money is because they don't prospect and follow up consistently. If you're not where you want to be, if we are at the halftime right now and you don't like the score, and here's a very simple score. Remember I talked about my health? You know how I measure it? Every morning at 6 a.m., I step on a scale. Because I can tell myself all kinds of bullshit stories. I can have all kinds of beliefs. I can have all kinds of noise and drunken monkeys. But the reality is that number does not lie. That number tells the truth. Your check balance, whatever you have in your checking account, whatever cash you can pull right now without mortgaging your house, <laughs> is the reality. It comes down to dollars. It comes down to how much money you have. You run a for-profit business, and if you're not making enough money, if this year has been shitty for you, there's the reason. You're not prospecting and following up consistently. End of conversation. Now, the number one reason for lack of consistency is the fear of rejection. You have an ingrained deep fear of rejection, and that fear and that discomfort is stopping you from reaching your goals. Fear of rejection is the most disruptive emotion for real estate agents. Fear of rejection is the most disruptive emotion that's stopping you from becoming a listing rock star making quarter of a million, half a million, million or more. Agents who mastered this, the achievers and rock stars I had the privilege to train, mastered it because they were able to get their emotions under control. It is not systems. It is not communication, it is the fear. Because once you manage the fear, once you get the emotions under control, everything else becomes a matter of how. What is my next step? I outline it right here. All of that would make perfect sense, but if you cannot get your emotions in check, if that fear of rejection is holding you back, you will never consistently implement what we just talked about. Now I have a solution for you, of course. If you do the path with me, I wrote a book, How to Take Care of the Drunken Monkey. It's called The Money Mindset. These are exercises and tools and systems I used in my business to get out of the fucking rut, which is being broken homeless. Many of you are using it. Many of you love it. You're going to get Mind Matrix. We need to take care of the mindset first. That is the foundation. That's why the path starts with it. So if you go to goborino.com, I will send you the book. I will help you with all this. Then, once we have that out of the way, I will help you build all these systems. We're going to do it together. And it's a fun process. Your emotions control your destiny. If you can control your emotions, you can control your income, you control your life. It's as simple or is as easy, as complicated, as fun as that. All right, my friends. Mike has a really good question. He likes that you always learn something new. Good. Question. Based on if we follow these steps correctly, on average, how long do you expect the process to take? What a good question, Mike. Short answer, no idea. Because there are a lot of variables. But I'll give you something. It shouldn't take more than 90 days because this business operates on a 90-day cycle. Here is why. Where you are today. So let's do the timeline real quick. What a great question. Thanks, thanks for asking that, Mike. So this is the timeline. You are here. This is today. Okay? Where you are today, Mike, is a result of your focus, beliefs, expectations, and actions, also your emotions, of course, 90 days ago. So where you were as far as your mindset that then resulted in your action is now showing up and demonstrating today. So that's bad news because right now, today, you cannot make dramatic change that will turn your business around completely in your life, right? That's impossible. They'd be like me saying, well, I'm going to go to the gym today, work my ass off for 12 hours, and I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Other than that, be tending my arm, it ain't going to happen. You follow me? So that's the bad news. The good news is where you will be 90 days from now, you can start shifting immediately today. So where do you start? You start shifting your focus, what you focus on, what you believe, your emotions, how you feel, your expectations, and these three then result in your actions. 
because it's your actions of taking action, building systems, being consistent, planning your day, executing the plan, will then start slowly shifting where you're going to end up 90 days from now. You can turn your life around, your business around, in as little as 90 days. It's possible. I'm not saying it's easy. I, I will not blow smoke up your ass pretending piece of cake walk in the park. It's not. But you know what's harder? You know what's more painful? Being in exactly the same place. Struggling. Being mediocre. Not living the lifestyle you want to live. Not building the empire you want to build. For you, your spouse, your kids, your grandkids, that'd be a lot worse. It's going to be hard either way. Pick your heart. Being broke is hard. Being average is hard. Being mediocre is hard. Struggling is hard. Being in the same place over and over will really beat you up. So I said, suck it up, buttercup. Let's get going. Shift your mindset. Start working on the stuff we talked about today. Follow these steps and you'll be in a different place. It's not going to be perfect. But it's going to be different. And it's going to move you on that trajectory towards the goals you set. That's how it's done. That's how thousands of agents do it every day. That's the whole secret. Everybody's looking for that magic bullet, that magic answer, that magic pill. This is it. And some of you heard it, and some of you were entertained by it, and some of you enjoyed it. Take some notes. Will you actually do it? That is the big question. All right, Mike? So that's the answer. Gohar says, thank you from Los Angeles. My pleasure. Glad I could help. Andres says, fabulous advice. Better practice with colleagues than clients. Yes, that is true, Alexander. Better practice with colleagues than, <laughs> than clients. Exactly. Shauna likes it. She says, it's great stuff. Good. Glad you enjoyed it, my friends. That's my message today. This is how you shift from being a chauffeur and a buyer's agent who is just fighting for scraps and struggling to becoming a listing rock star who is in control of your life, your market, your income, help clients make a lot of money and feel good about it. You don't have to hustle every weekend. You don't have to slave 12 hours a day. You can have the freedom. It's going to take some effort, some time, and some training. I'm here to help. Come do the path with me. Go to goborino.com. Sign up for it. I'll send you the books. We'll send you all the resources. We'll have you up and running quickly. It can be done. I'm here to rekindle that hope you had when you first started in real estate. And if you're just starting real estate, start it right. This is what it takes. These are the answers. I learned the hard way. <laughs> you don't have to. Thank you very much for being here today. Different session. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll do this again. I'll talk to you real soon. Coach Borino signing off. Let's go get him. Ciao. Bye, everybody.